we have to teach our people these laws. Because the pastors of the churches, they're not teaching the laws. We established that. Give me a... Got it. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So, sis, what's a woman's garment? You don't know? You're a woman, sis. What's a woman's garment? Skirts, right? Skirts, dresses, things of that nature, right? Okay, read that from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a woman's garment being a skirt or dress. Man, the scripture says a man should not be wearing a woman's garment, right? That, that, that's a form of cross dressing. That's what it's called today, right? So God, this is a law. This is what I was telling you. This is a law of God. Putting on a man putting on a dress is breaking God's law, transgressing God's law, which is sin. Read the first part of that verse. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, if a skirt or a dress is a garment of a woman, what is the garment of a man? I guess what you all have on. Which, which is pants. Pants is, the, pants is the garment of a man. That's right. The scriptures tell us that pants were given to the man, not to the woman. So read that scripture one more time. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So God said that's an abomination. That men are wearing dresses, rompers, or whatever are... Uh, 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 this uh, social media has shown today, and women wearing pants. It's cross-dressing. Just like we read earlier, there's, there is a, a judgment for all these sins. You got that? Yeah. Read. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So when Christ comes back, this is what's going to happen. Read. That I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So all those amongst Israel that are clothed with strange apparel, all those that are cross-dressing, all those men that are wearing uh, uh, rompers and dresses and skirts and all those females that are wearing shorts and uh, uh, pants. What's going to happen? And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So when he say punish, says that's not like uh like how your parents punish you when you when you do something bad. Let's find out what that punishment is in uh, Romans Romans six. Let's find out what it is whenever you breaking God's laws and He clearly tells you several times in the scriptures not to do it. But us being a stiff neck and hard people, we don't we we go against it. We say, oh well, I got this out of the uh, out of the woman's section, but it was still given to man, sis. Great. Romans chapter six verse twenty-three. For the wages of sin is death. So you hear that, sis? When you break in God's law, the wages just like when you when, when, at your job, you do you do uh, uh, work and you get a wage. The wages of sin, the payment for sin, is what. Payment for sin says is death. So wearing where pants is, is not worth it. The scripture says that we that women are supposed to uh, adorn themselves in modest apparel. Right? Read that. But the, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So keeping these laws, sis, is, is what we need to do. Yeah, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it says, women are supposed to, women are supposed to adorn themselves in modest apparel. You know what it is, uh, uh, modest apparel is? So modest apparel is uh, wearing a dress that's not showing off your shape. 
Because whenever you wear pants, sis, that's that's what our men looking at. Men walking down the street, they come by and they see a woman in pants, they see it showing off their shape. Right. So that's immodest. It's not modest, right? Because now you showing up your showing off your shape when well, your shape is supposed to and, and, and all that's supposed to be for your husband. Right. right. That's not supposed to be for your brother walking by down the street that's lusting. Now he sees you, uh, he sees your shape and now he's lusting after you. Because he's only gonna want one thing, right? He's not he's not looking he's not looking at you as a princess of God. Right. 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 He's looking at you as uh, uh he, he's thinking hoarder. That's all he's thinking, sis. And, and the scripture tells us we're not supposed to uh, suffer sin on our brother. That's a form of suffering sin. Not only is we wear is women wearing pants and it's a sin, and now you suffer sin against our uh, against your brother. Is that all I know? <laughs> with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broaded hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So. Being modest, first and foremost, you have to not worry about, oh, is my hair done good, or oh, I got the best jewelry on. That's not the first thing you're supposed to be thinking about. You're supposed to be thinking, am I keeping the laws of God? Am I being modest? Am I being, uh, do I have a dress on first and foremost? Right. right. But, which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So with good works, sis, you have, you have to put God first. And putting God first, is doing these laws. Right. Because we all say we love God, right? Let, let, let's find, let, how, do, how do we love God, sir? The law, right? Yeah. That's, well, it's, it's not according to us, sir. It's according to God's word. That's right. Because we're not, we, we're not up here teaching, telling you what I think. So, sir, so I'm not up here telling you my opinion or what I think. I'm reading straight out the Bible, and, and you're, you're hearing it for yourself, right? Let Christ speak. Three. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, so sis, this is Christ speaking. He's telling us to let our light shine before men. How we let our light shine before men? By doing these laws. Read. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Verse 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have not come to destroy but to fulfill. So it says the law, Christ says that he did not come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy the laws. Like you said, according to what we, we believe. This, this is what we believe. We believe every word of God. That's right. And we believe, believe this is Christ speaking. He's saying that he didn't come to destroy the law. The law is still in effect. The law that, that uh, uh, sisters have to be in dresses and, and, and brothers not to put dresses on, to put pants on. That's a law. Read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass to pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. So Christ is saying until heaven and earth pass, which heaven is still above us and we still standing here on earth, until that passes and go goes away, which it hasn't, not one jot, not one, nothing is to be changed from the law. The law is still in effect. Give me a, uh, yeah. Wait. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men to do so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So, that's what we're up here to tell you, sis. We are, we're up here to teach you the law, because he, because Christ is going to say that if we don't, if those break just the least, the smallest law is going to be the least in the, in the kingdom. It's going to be the least. Read. Uh, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But sis, that's the ultimate goal. We want to get to the kingdom, right? You don't want to get to the kingdom? You content with where you at? The kingdom of heaven. You didn't you didn't hear what the scripture just said? Read that again. But but whosoever shall break one of the least 
of, of commandments and shall teach men to do so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. For whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So sis, that's the only kingdom that we ain't worried about. We don't need to be worried about this kingdom. Right. This ain't our kingdom. Right. right. If we were ruling in this kingdom, we wouldn't have we wouldn't be uh we wouldn't be out here teaching you today. We would not be out here warning you of the judgment that's to come. Says this is not our kingdom. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand, sir. We need to keep these laws and come back to God. Let me get another law. Do uh give me uh numbers. Uh take read again from the top. Think not that I'll come to destroy the law. Read, read, read it top now. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. Have you, heard, have you heard that in churches yet? You 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 you've heard, I'm sure you've heard that spirit, that uh that scripture where Christ says, let your light shine. What he's saying is let your actions be evident before other people. Let your relationship with God be evident before other people. Because how do you know someone who's godly versus someone who's ungodly? For instance, I'll give you a, a brother. You're going to see him very committed to one woman. You're going to see him raising his family, being there as the head of the household, supportive to his woman, to his wife. He's going to treat her good. He's going to be uh, active in the church and in the body of Christ. He's, uh, he's going to be active in his community and trying to raise awareness to his community. He's going to be doing a lot of good things. He's going to be keeping the commandments of God. You'll see that uh, based on the scripture, a man should have a beard, should be wearing fringes, should be keeping, it should be evident of someone keeping the commandments. When you understand, that's that's why the scripture says, uh, 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 study to show thyself approved. So therefore you can know what God is uh commanding in the scriptures and how to see and understand and comprehend when you see a godly person versus an ungodly man you may see Tyrone come by and I'm just saying Tyrone he got his pants sagging he's selling dope on the corner he's smoking cigarettes defiling his temple he's hollering at every sister he see walk by he won't commit to anything he uh you know, he, he's out. he don't have a job, won't keep a job, beats up on the woman. I'm no, Now, those are extreme cases, but it's not so extreme because you see a lot of that in our community, right? You see a lot of that. And so, God says, or Christ says, let your, let your light shine. So, meaning, let your relationship with God be evident based on your uh, behavior, or based on your... The, the, but, but you see, what is that? A man may be known by his gate. Hold that Sirach, and give me that. Sirach chapter 19. Sirach 19. Give me that. Hold that in Matthew and give me Sirach 19. I hope you're listening, sister. This is a lot of information that's coming out. Let's see. 29. 29. Sirach chapter 19, verse... Uh, what verse was that? You can start at 29. 29, okay. A man may be known by his look. So a man now, it says... Because we're supposed to judge all things. The world may say, no one can judge me but God. But that's not true. Everybody judge you. And not, a lot of time it's based on your first impression. So a man may be known by his look. And one that has understanding by his countenance. So you know a man that has understanding based on how he presents himself. Based on his continent. I know a woman that has understanding based on how she presents herself. Because a woman that don't have understanding, what well, she's gonna be loud, she's gonna be arrogant, she's gonna be uh she's not gonna be a chase keep at home, she's gonna be it's gonna be evident that she lacks understanding. Just like a man, it will be evident if he lacks understanding. Read. When thou meetest him, a man's attire and excessive laughter. A man's what? Attire and excessive laughter. So he has on fringes, he has on a board of blue, he's conducting himself well, he's not sagging his pants so the world can see his behind. Bring it up. Let me tell you a real true story about that Thursday night. Hey, when the motherfucker packed my pockets and pissed my ass, and, I, and nobody, the Check police this. come out with the but he ain't he want to do no work. So the camera ain't work. All I ask them if it's off your off duty, then I whoop your ass. Now this happened on Thursday, but that's why you gotta give it to him raw. Yeah, understand, hey, understand. True. Thank you, brother. But a man may be known by his understanding, sister. A man may be known by his understanding. So you can see a man, his continence, the things he say, how he dressed. We base all of that 
according to scripture. And that's how the world see. Now, a lot of our people, you can see that they lack understanding. Read. A man's attire, excessive laughter, and gait. And so a man's laughter, and walk, and talk, read. Show what he is. Whether or not he's crazy, whether or not he has understanding, whether or not he submits to God, whether or not he's of the world, read. So go back to Matthew. So he says, let your light shine. Meaning, it should be evident what your character is and that you're reflecting your relationship with God based on how you present yourself. So now, in the scripture, God tell us how we should present ourselves. And the church is, is part of telling us that do away with those things. So it's not according to what we say. God wrote this. God put it out that a woman should be dressed a certain way, a man should be dressed a certain way, and we should conduct ourselves in a certain manner. Read. That's right. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. God, so Christ is saying you should conduct yourself in a certain manner to reflect that you believe on him. Read. That they may see your good works uh -huh. and glorify your... May see your what? Good work. Your good actions. Read. Or you... Or your... Or your... Uh... You keeping the law or keeping the commandments, those are works. Your actions, read. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So all glory can be to God. Do you understand that, sis? So our actions are supposed to be in a manner that is becoming of us to favor God. So people can look and say, you know what? God deal with that people. Right. People don't say that about us right now because we're in a low state and because we won't hearken to God's commandment. Right. So therefore... God is not being glorified in our actions. Read. 17. Think not that I've come to destroy the law. What did Christ say? Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. So the law or the prophets. He brought out a law and then he brought out what the prophet wrote about that law. Because remember, the prophets wrote about things that Israel would face for breaking the law. So in the law of Moses, you have things written like Deuteronomy 22 and 5, and then Zephaniah gave the, the judgment for breaking that law, or the future judgment that Christ would bring for breaking that law. And Matthew, Christ is saying he didn't come to do away with the things that were written in the law, or the prophecies concerning him fulfilling the law, or bringing judgment for breaking the law. What? I'm going to say it again. Christ said, in, are you listening, sister? What? Christ says in Matthew, he didn't come to destroy the law, and he didn't come to destroy what the prophets were concerning him and bringing judgment for breaking the law. Right. Now he brought it out for you, I'm going to bring it out again. Hold where you at, Matthew, and bring it back out Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Hello? Because we have to bring all things into our people's remembrance, and we have to teach our people. And right. this is how we correctly teach the Bible. The churches are not going to do this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Read up. Read up. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now this is in the law. Where you read it from? Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Stop. The men are supposed to wear pants. The women, they wear garments such as dresses, which is modest apparel because a man shouldn't be able to see your figure. He shouldn't be able to see your shape. Dresses and skirts are what women are supposed to wear. Prior to the move, the, the, women, the feminist movement, women were not wearing pants. And they didn't have that manly spirit that they have on them today. Now give me exact Paul. Continue that out. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God. So he says, everyone that does that are an abomination unto the, the Lord our God. Let's see, yeah, I want Zephaniah, uh, but I also want hold that, but I want Jeremiah 44 and 4 to see how God feels about abominable acts or abominable things. Because we hear that word, but we may not fully comprehend how God feels about it. So we're going to go into the scriptures to prove all things for our people. Right. Okay. You got it? Yep. Read. Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 4. How be it I sent unto you my servants. So how be it I sent unto you Israel my servants. Read. The prophets. The prophets. Read. Rising early and sending them saying. Oh do not this abominable thing that I hate. So 
know that's the prophet's job is to teach the people what God consider abominable because he hate those things. Now give me, yep, you already know what I want. Yep. So now we're teaching, God says that women and pants are an abominable act. Jeremiah confirms God hates it and it's a, an abominable act. Now, Zephaniah tells us what God will do for those that are in that abominable act according to 20, Deuteronomy 20, 25. Read. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. It and it shall come to pass in the day of Now, he's saying it shall come to pass because it's a future prophecy. Read. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Meaning God coming, Christ coming, God sending his son Christ a second time for the second visiting for him to come back and bring judgment. Read, that's the Lord's sacrifice. Read, that I will punish the princes. God, Christ is going to what? Punish the princes. Christ is going to what? Punish the princes. Christ is going to bring judgment. Read, and the king's children unto Israel. Read, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So everybody that are wearing strange apparel. Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.